So in this episode of the HX1 Tonner build, gonna to get this reverse scoop fitted to the bonnet, get it all smoothed off and coated in a layer of epoxy primer. So I am waiting on the hinges to arrive for the bonnet as well. So I've ordered some billet hinges. So I'm hoping they're gonna arrive in the next couple days. And then once the bonnet is coated in the epoxy, I can fit the bonnet and then gap the bonnet and then gap all the front end as well. So before we get into things, I just wanted to have a quick chat about the functionality of the reverse scoop. So apart from looks and solving clearance issues by covering up the air cleaners that are sticking out of the bonnet, I was actually thinking, do they serve a purpose? So I was looking on the internet, doing a little bit of research on sort of how they work, and I'll sort of give you my take on how they work. So as you are driving at speed, you're gonna have all this airflow flowing over the bonnet once it hits the windscreen. So the windscreen obviously comes up like so. So you're gonna have all this airflow coming over the bonnet. It's gonna hit the windscreen and cause a restriction. When you have a restriction, that is gonna build up air pressure. So it's gonna kind of create a pocket of higher air pressure in this area here. And then obviously there's this opening here. Inside there is gonna be a lower pressure. So you're gonna have higher air pressure here, lower air pressure in there, which is gonna create a vacuum. So the higher air pressure is gonna take the path of least resistance and then flow through this little opening here into the scoop and then get sucked up by the air filter. So the colder the air and the fresh air going into the scoop is gonna create more power. So in theory, that's how it works and that's my take on it. Whether it works very well or not, I'm not sure, but I guess that is the uh, functionality of the reverse scoop. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is cut a hole in the bonnet before I fit the scoop. That way I've got access to the both sides. I can yeah, do a nice clean cut and get that all looking nice and smooth before I fit the scoop. So the first thing I've done, so I'm able to reach up in there just through the front here, and I've just marked the center of where the carby is or the center of where the air cleaner is gonna go. So I can use that as a reference and then yeah, go from there. So I've just taken the bonnet off. I've got that marked roughly where I'm gonna cut. So you can see it's a bit of an oval sort of a shape. I wanted to try and keep it in between these cross braces Obviously they're structural, structural pieces. And you got these four sort of plugs, I guess, that hold the skin to, to the ribbing. So I th yeah, I think I wanna try and keep in between there. So if I put this air cleaner roughly where it sits, I think that should be plenty of clearance to clear by the time you lift the bonnet up. So there's should be plenty of sideways clearance and then yeah, plenty of clearance for the, uh, the bonnet to uh, hinge up and down. Okay, so that hole is cut in the bonnet. I've just put the bonnet back on and yeah, that clears pretty well. So the air cleaner, I thought it was gonna stick out a little bit higher than that, but it, yeah, it sort of sticks out maybe a good inch and a half, two inches. But anyway, there is still plenty of clearance there. So I've sat the reverse scoop on there and there is heaps of clearance there still, probably another two to three inches. So. If I ever want to in the future, I could probably stick a five inch air cleaner hanging out. That is a three inch, and I ended up putting a one inch uh, spacer in between the carby and the inlet manifold as well. So yeah, if I do want to in the future, I can stick a five inch. But anyway, for the time being, I think that's gonna be pretty good. So I just fitted the old hinges. I just wanted to make sure that there was gonna be clearance for when I lifted the uh, bonnet up. I know that when you lift the hinges up, it sort of does come forward slightly, but yeah, there is plenty of clearance there, so it clears, no worries. Yeah, just better to be safe than sorry. I just thought I'd check it now. So yeah, that bonnet fits pretty well now. I had to do a little bit of manipulating of the front and just sort of move that around a little bit, but uh, it fitted pretty well. So yeah, the old boom, uh, broom job done the trick. It was kind of pretty hard to get that on by yourself, but anyway, I managed to get it on. So to fit this scoop, what I'm gonna do is glue it on. So I called up Repliglass and they recommended a product from 3M. 
So this is called a panel bonding adhesive. That's a part number there. And it comes with a mixing nozzle. So it is a two part product. So it comes with a mixing nozzle. So basically that sort of mixes as it goes through the tube. So there's like zigzags through and then mixes together. So I've also ordered a 3M manual applicator. So you need one of these as well. So what I'll do is I'll put a link in the show notes for both these products if you are interested in ordering them from eBay. So with this product, it needs to be applied to bare metal. So what I'm gonna do is I've marked out where the scoop sits and I'm gonna basically take sort of this section back to bare metal and then a strip along there where it is basically gonna sit and then that's gonna be glued straight to bare metal. What I'm gonna do is just leave this old paint in the sort of in the center of the uh, bonnet where the scoop goes over. I don't really think it's any point taking that back to bare metal. We're never gonna see in there. The paint's pretty good. And yeah, what I'll do is I'll just sort of scuff it up and yeah, get it ready. So then when it comes time to paint in the bonnet, I can just blow some color in or, or some epoxy um, in here and it's already sort of um, sanded back. So. The ends, I'll probably just use a bit of paint stripper to take them back. So that is taken back to bare metal. So now I can fit the scoop on, get it all marked up, dead center, take some, me take some measurements and get it, yeah, dead center. And then, yeah, I can start gluing it in. So I've just got that scoop sitting on and what I've done was mark the center line. So I've just used this hump to mark the center. So there is a difference. So from this center mark to the outside of the scoop, there's about a five or six mil difference from yeah, that side to the other side. So don't go aligning the scoop up from this edge here to the outside of the bonnet. Use the center line and then get them measurements exactly the same on both sides um, with the edge of the bonnet. And then also do the same on the uh, back end of it as well and then that way it's dead center with the bonnet. So now that that is sitting dead center, I've marked the corners. So each corner I've just gone around with a texture and marked it, and I've just clamped that in with the clamps to hold that in for now. So with the front, you got access to clamp all along here and also the back as well. But yeah, obviously you can't get clamps in the middle section and that's sort of sticking up. You can sort of see that that's sticking up there like so. So what I'll do is I'll screw in some self-tapping screws uh, along here just to be able to yeah, get that to um, mount up flush with the bonnet. So that is all glued on and clamped. So you got all the clamps on the front there, got all the screws up the side here and the two clamps at the back. So I ended up using two tubes. So I was only gonna buy one tube, but I'm definitely glad I bought two. Definitely need two tubes. So yeah, I'll let that dry overnight.
Okay, so it's a new morning and I've just removed all the clamps and all the screws and that is bloody solid. That is not gonna go anywhere anytime soon. So yeah, there's no flex in that at all. It's just hard bonded to the bonnet, which is what you want. So you don't want any flex at all because yeah, if you got flex, then that's gonna cause cracking when you put the body filler over the top. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that product. I think that's gonna turn out pretty well. So I did forget to mention that the product does have a 90 minute work time. So there's more than enough time to get all the glue on and then yeah, get the bonnet on and get it positioned and, and clamped down. I did pre-drill all the screw holes before I did uh, apply the adhesive. And I don't really think that's necessary. You could probably do it afterwards because you've got 90 minutes to work with, you've got more than enough time to apply the adhesive and then put the bonnet, uh, the scoop on and then you can yeah, drill all the screws in afterwards. So I've just gone around with the orbital sander. There was a bit of a lip there, so where the scoop meets the bonnet. So I've just sort of blended that in with the orbital sander. And then I've applied a layer of fiberglass filler. So I'm just using this U-Pole product called Fiberlite. So that's obviously got strength to it. So yeah, the first layer is the fiberglass filler. And then I've sanded that back. And then now I can go over with the just your normal body filler. So I'm just using a premium body filler from Upol. Um, so that is for medium depth repairs. So yeah, I'll put a layer of that over and then start sending that back as well. So that is the top of the bonnet all smoothed off. So you can just see, I've just used the body filler over the scoop as well. So coming out of the mold, they're not exactly perfect out of the mold. So they do need a little bit of work to smooth them off. So I've just sanded that back with 80 grit and applied the body filler over the top, sanded the back. I've used the guide coat as well. So this is just a 3M guide coat and just rub it on. Gets in all the little tiny cracks and imperfections and it just makes it a lot easier to see where you need to spend a bit more time and work it a little bit more. So I think all that's come out, yeah, really good. It's taken a while to get all that nice, but I think when it comes time to applying the high fill um, and then blocking it back, it's gonna be quite easy to do that because I've just spent the time now to get that all pretty smooth. So you can just see these sections here, I didn't end up taking back to bare metal. I didn't really see any point taking them back to bare metal. You can kind of see um, you got your base coat, you got primer and then bare metal here. So it looks like it's probably been stripped back previously to bare metal, can't see any old paint or anything. So there's just, yeah, no point taking it back to bare metal. It's just gonna save a lot of time that way anyway. It's pretty relatively flat. So um, yeah, I think that's gonna be uh, pretty good. So I've just flipped this bonnet over and I think what I'm gonna do is just use the orbital sander, go over it, scuff it all up, get it all nice and smooth and I'll just leave majority of that old paint on there. Yeah, once again, there's probably no point taking it back to bare metal. I think the epoxy over the top will be fine. So 
I've just got this bonnet all set up, ready to spray the epoxy. I've got my little spray booth set up. The sheets are just blowing around. It's a pretty windy day, so once I spray it, I'll close the doors and um, yeah, just let that sit and, and cure. So what I'm gonna do is give it two coats. So I'll spray one coat, let it flash off, and then spray a second coat. So I'm ready to mix up all my primer here. So I will be using this uh, Flow Right. So this is the epoxy that I've been using for the whole build. So it's just a 2K uh, four to one. So yeah, we'll start mixing up and start spraying. So that's two coats applied. So I managed to get the top side and then underneath done all in the one. I just saw it'd be easier like that rather than paint one side, let it dry, flip it over, paint the other side. It would have just mean cleaning up two lots of paint and mixing up two lots of paint. And yeah, it's just easier doing it in the one. So I think that's turned out pretty good. I used a couple of uh, lengths of timber just to prop that up. It is a little bit sketchy. It's not very stable, but I managed to get it done without knocking it over, so that's a good thing. So it's turned out pretty good. The scoop blends into the bonnet nicely, so I think all that looks pretty good. I did have one incident, so because I was filming outside, I had the roller door up, I didn't want the camera in here and get overspray all over it, so that's why I put the camera outside with the roller door up, but a big gust of wind has come through and it's just pulled the rear drop sheet off and the drop sheet's just landed straight onto the bonnet and it's just sort of come across here like so and it's just put like little ripples in that first layer of epoxy. So I ended up putting a second coat of epoxy over and then I put a third coat just sort of in this area to build it up it's, um, yeah, you can definitely see it, but I think it's gonna rub back. It should be fine once I rub that back. It's just kind of annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Also, when the gust come through, it brought in a bit of dirt and it's put a few little areas. It's put a little bit of dirt there, which will rub back as well. But yeah, it's, like I said, it's kind of annoying. But anyway, so I'm pretty, yeah, stoked with how it's turned out apart from the little incident, but yeah, I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> okay, so I've just got that bonnet sitting on there and I think that has turned out pretty bloody awesome. I'm pretty stoked on that. So I will put a link in the show notes for Repliglass for the uh, website. So if you do want to order a fiberglass scoop, then yeah, click on the link and head over to their website. You can order it online. And I'll also put a link in the show notes for the 3M panel bonding adhesive and the applicator as well. So yeah, I guess time will tell whether it will crack or not. I don't think it will. I'm pretty confident in that. And I did get the advice from uh, Repliglass. That's how they do them. And they've had no issues with cracking doing it that way. So yeah, time will tell, but yeah, I think it's gonna be fine. So if you wanna help support the channel, head over to the Shanky Garage merch store. So there's various products, there's hoodies, t-shirts, all different colors, different sizes. So yeah, click on the link in the show notes below to head to the Shanky Garage merch store. I'll also put a card up in this corner for the HX1 Tunner build. So if you are new to the channel, I suggest go back to the very first episode and watch it from the first episode all the way to the latest. There's plenty of episodes, a lot of watching, but have a binge on that. Also, if you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button below, hit the bell notifications to give you an alert on when new videos are coming out. So we'll leave it at that and we'll see you next time on Shanky Garage. Cheers.